On the clock now with a minute to explore a handful of notable headlines from the week. First on the agenda, we mourn the passing of John Dendahl, a former state Republican Party chairman and a GOP gubernatorial candidate. It's a pretty strong ran against Bill Richardson in 2006. Right. His uh, legacy is, is important to New Mexico, certainly, but he was especially significant to us here at New Mexico in focus. He was on the very first episode of The Line when it started out as a standalone program in 2005, and he remained as a regular panelist for almost a year until leaving us in 2006 to pursue the governor's seat. And Steve, that clip we were just showing, we folks just saw a shot of you as a matter of fact, the former Steve Terrell, now the current Steve Terrell, uh, on, the, <laughs> on the show at the same time. You covered John a bunch in your career. What are your thoughts? And you wrote a, a, a lovely piece, a bit, about him. Talk about I, him. I said yeah. John Dendahl was a reporter's dream. Right? <laughs> he always returned phone calls. He always had something interesting to say. He was, he was friendly, even when he was pointed. Yeah. Uh, I ran it when I, the day I found out that he died, well, Saturday when he died, mm -hmm. I ran into a former uh, Democratic uh, state chairman, Earl Potter. And Earl was totally shocked, you know, even though they were butting heads back in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, he said, Dendahl could insult you without being offensive. Right. <laughs> and he just loved the guy. And then, you know, then, um, yeah. uh, not everybody did. You know, I, after my article came out in the paper, I had, uh, I saw two emails right together. One was from a Democrat who hated Dendahl. Yeah. The other was from a Republican who hated Dendahl. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, I love the guy. Yeah, he was interesting. Yeah. Um, let me throw this over to you. I mean, it, as a political figure, yeah. he pulled no punches. There was no quarter. He could take one. He could throw one. He was a very interesting cat. Well, John, really John was, was John yeah. was very close to me. He was one of my mentors. Helped yeah. me the first time I ran. Um, was always there for me. And, and my family are deeply going to miss yeah. him. And so is New Mexico. The thing about I would say about John, and I've heard this from Democrat friends of mine. Mm -hmm. Say what you want about Republican, Democrat, John was a New Mexican. There you go. He yeah. cared about New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And no matter who had the idea, he cared about making New Mexico better. And I think that's why he had the respect from so many people. That was worth the extra time. I'm going to hold you guys there. Let these guys handle it. Now, misuse of social media has landed the superintendent of Albuquerque Public Schools in a lot of trouble. Winston Brooks, who was here last week to talk about this, served a three-day unpaid suspension this week for tweeting moo moo oink oink in reference to Education Secretary designate Hannah Skandera. Now, his Twitter handle has been removed, and some are calling for him to be removed as well. <laughs> Jerry, Winston Brooks, should he lose his job over this? Is three days suspension enough to settle this whole thing, or what's, what's the deal here? Um, I, don't, I don't know about um, whether he should lose his job or not. I think yeah. one of the most disturbing things to me about this was when I was reading that not only was he tweeting, and he was very, very new to social media, and that's no excuse. I, mean, yeah. any, I think anybody should know better and just make public statements of any kind. But the social media director of APS also weighed in right. with emoticons. To me, that's very troubling. That's the, the social media director should... Uh, From her couch, the, the whole watching policy. television, she said. <laughs> right, exactly right. That was very interesting. Your thoughts on this as but, well. I mean, yeah. I think the bigger issue that there's this ongoing conflict between APS and the right. education secretary and what's going on there, and this is just an outburst of that, and right. that's not going to go away. I guess you could take Brooks away, but it's not going to go away. There are these ongoing issues. They're the serious thing here. Interestingly, Steve, uh, from what Lana said, there has been a meeting this week between high-level APS folks and Ms. Scandera and other folks at PED. Maybe something good has come out of it. You they said know. it was a very productive meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've got to quote Bill Richardson here, because Bill Richardson once said that uh, if somebody comes out from a meeting and says it was a very productive meeting, it means it didn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. And he's had that himself a few times. It was a very productive meeting. Cool, short there on time. Dan, I'm going to hold you there. Governor Susana Martinez was in New Jersey campaigning for Chris Christie, the governor there, the day before he won re-election as the state's governor. That got local and national media speculating that a Chris christie Susana Martinez pairing is just the ticket to win the presidential election for the GOP in 16. Lana, let me start with you. Susana has, Ms. Uh, Martinez, excuse me, has flat out said that no one, uh, when asked, she's, no, no, she's just saying no. But she keeps showing up at these places with yeah. these people. You have to say no because your <laughs> right. next campaign is for governor. And, but she has a campaign after that, and we right. don't know what that is. I mean, I think any GOP, not just Christie, but any GOP presidential nominee should be considering uh, Governor Martinez on the ticket. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, but well, it's a bit early to be thinking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Dan, your thought. Chris Christie? Oh, I, uh, well, Susanna Martinez, yeah. what do you think? I'm not a big Chris Christie fan. I didn't so, think you uh, were. You're right. You know, but I mean, he's clearly <laughs> effective. I mean, yeah. Republicans getting elected in New Jersey are, are a shock. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's definitely interesting. I think that she's mm -hmm. such a commodity, and it's interesting to see the enthusiasm for her 
around outside of New Mexico and right. that you know there's so many people I mean I, I have relatives that live in New York that you know I have very liberal I know people will find this shocked very liberal relatives who think she's the greatest person in the world I mean they'll call me from New York and we're right. like hey there's an article on your governor I love that governor I think she's got great mass appeal people like her she comes off very well to people and it's interesting how angry Democrats in New Mexico are that this portrayal of her being able to work well and be bipartisan mm -hmm. is uh, being portrayed in the national media kudos to her and her team because She's a rock star. It's amazing the kind of Democratic votes Chris Christie can pull. It's an amazing thing. I mean, the numbers are really Bruce quite Springsteen. Sounding. You get through a primary. Bruce, right, for a, a GOP primary. Bruce that's Springsteen. Right. I think that's that's right. Bruce Springsteen. That's who does it for you. There you go. It's another blow for downtown Albuquerque, which has been steadily losing office workers for years. The Gap confirmed rumors this week that it's moving its corporate shared services center and its three to four hundred employees to Journal Center. This follows years of federal agencies and private firms also leaving downtown. And the office vacancy rate now hovers at about 30 percent. And Jerry, uh, I'm sorry, Lana, let me start with you on this one. It is, I remember when these, I was in, working in economic development at the time when they came in, big hoopla when the gap mm -hmm. came. This was supposed to be the thing that launched a, a new, yeah. literally a new breed of office downtown mm -hmm. worker away from the federal mm -hmm. government. It's a big loss to have those guys go away. I don't know how we make up for this. It is. I mean, there. that's yeah. huge to the, to the lunch crowd yes. down there. Yes. Um, it is huge. And, you know, downtown, they've done all these efforts to revitalize, mm -hmm. and it just hasn't, it doesn't seem to be sticking. Yeah. Dan, what do you think on this one? Uh, you know, it, parking, Journal Center, we all get that, but there's Well, two things, is, I think. You know, Thank God, first of all, Gap's not leaving New Mexico. That's a good I point. I mean, that's a, you know, they're moving. Fair enough. You know, the other thing I'll tell you is that there's a, a company in, in New Mexico, Peterson Properties, yes. and they're buying up a chunk of downtown property, and if you watch, they're really trying to revitalize it with a mixed use down there. They're mm -hmm. trying to put, you know, they're taking a lot of these office buildings and turn them into condos and, and apartment-type complexes with retail down below. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think downtown is going through kind of a revitalization, starting with the Albu uh, former Albuquerque High School, turning sure. that into those uh, sure. those apartments down there. Mm -hmm. I think you're seeing people are moving out of commuting to downtown to go to work, but I think people are wanting to move downtown to live mm -hmm. for the ability to go out and do things and That's the right. accessibility and live in the apartments. So I think it's going to be a trade-off. I think at the end of the day, the mayor's initiative with Peterson Properties, I think you're going to see a successful turnaround downtown. Interesting. New subject. There has been much talk over the years of commercializing more technology from the national laboratories, but results have been less than stellar. To put it softly, now there is a renewed push to involve the University of New Mexico in this process and bring more of these innovations to the private sector with the idea of creating new companies and jobs. The new Collaborative Research and Development Council held its first meeting recently. It includes top officials from colleges around the state and representatives from the labs, of course, and other federal installations here. Stephen, UNM President Robert Frank says this partnership is a priority for him, but what I find very interesting is both he and Senator Udall and Heinrich are talking openly about getting UNM on the bid to part to bid parts of it of Sandia when it comes up. Not not to run the whole thing, but that's a significant change from years past. Getting the university involved more with Sandia. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. I, uh, I hope it works. Um, you know, like you pointed out, uh, they've been talking about you know yeah. technology <laughs> transfers for so many years. You are uh, not kidding. And uh, nothing seems to you know a few businesses get created here and there, but. Right. Uh, Right. I hope this thing works. But that's the problem, I think. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, is that you've got the labs here mm -hmm. with the people here that mm -hmm. are being run by people that are three, four, five states away. Mm -hmm. Partnering with the University of New Mexico, I think, where you can take that initial, that that venture idea, that that, right. that, that micro business, yep. and grow it with New Mexicans here yep. and keep that idea here versus it going out to California where the ones that succeed, they're already out in California. That's right. Keeping them here, if they right. succeed, maybe they'll stay in New Mexico. I'll let that be the last word. That's a great point to end on. Thank you all for being here. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks. Best of luck getting up, back up to Santa Fe. Always like them when you come back down to see us. Yeah. That's Alrighty. for sure. Good deal. As always, all of us here at New Mexico in Focus appreciate your time and your efforts to stay informed and engaged. Catch up with us anytime on social media by searching New Mexico in Focus. And you can find archived interviews and lots of good bonus material from our shows on our YouTube channel and at NewMexicoInFocus.org. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.